Ladies and gentlemen, leading the process over the field are members of the 1993 Rowan football team, which will be inducted into the Athletics Hall of Fame tomorrow. This squad ran 11-2 and made the school's first ever appearance in the NCAA championship game. here to Coach Richard Wacker Stadium in Glassboro, New Jersey, on the site of Rowan University. Rowan University football here on homecoming Saturday, get set to take on the captains of Christopher Newport University. I'm Aaron Hook, I've got Justin Locke here to my left. Justin, uh, a lot to get into, and first of all, I mean, the weather, uh, I, I don't think Mother Nature knew it was homecoming Saturday because uh, we got Overcast skies, fed rain coming down on us here pretty much all morning, and uh, the Profs are going to have to battle through some tough weather here today. Yeah, and for this, uh, the Profs have not won a home game prior to this, so it's going to be even harder conditions. They're 0-3 at home before this game, and they've had some beatings here. Johns Hopkins beat them 55-20 last time, September 30th, and then their sinus beat them by 44 to 26. So you've seen really two times, last two times out here on the field, it's been at Richard Wacker, not a good sighting. Obviously, they have a good win on the road last week. They're 2-0 on the road, which is kind of a surprise. Usually, you're better at home, but the Prost team, they beat McDaniel that second week, and last week, they walked away with another great win against TCNJ. Yeah, Rowan, 9-7 to last week over TCNJ in their NJAC opener, and freshman quarterback Nate Mayers, 16-25, 163 yards and a touchdown. He's going to lead the Prost here today. Point toss just happened right behind us. We're going to flip around, and uh, we'll be back after the national anthem for first half action here in Glassboro.
just honored our nation here in Glassboro. Again, a overcast Saturday afternoon, a couple minutes past the two o'clock hour. Getting set for kickoff here at Coach Richard Wacker Stadium. 54 degrees with a light drizzle here in the borough. It's the homecoming festivities that you saw prior to kickoff. Got a big tailgate going on in the uh, parking lot behind the north end zone. And just you know, for, for a Prost team that won last week, some things that happened in that game may have, you know, with the incredible finish and all, may have had that game feel like a bit of a loss for the Prost. You lose starter Tommy Goldsboro behind center and also starting running back James Ferrer coming in second in the conference in rushing. He's going to be out for this game as well. Prost are going to need guys to step up. We talked about the freshman quarterback, Mayers, and we'll see Tyshawn Bookman, the freshman running back, uh, get the start today. Yeah, and Tyshawn Bookman and then your RB2, you guys pull the fourth. He's had more rushing yards, eight yards per carry on his uh, behalf, and they're going to have to be the two-headed monster here for Prost. Again, looking for their first home victory here. Against a good three and two just for the Newport team. They're coming off a loss. These tickets in college in overtime, 27 and 24 as Frost will look to uh, do this wrong again. Not great Fugus as you touched on earlier. Frost are set to kick it away. Peter Parigi lining it up. Christopher Newport coming in three and two off a loss last week in overtime to Dickinson College out in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. And we are underway with a spinning kick by Parigi. Going to be fielded at about the five-yard line. Coming across the 20 with a cut back to the 30. And now free at the 35, up to the 40, 45, 50. Down to the 40 at the 30, the 20, the 10. And it is a opening game touchdown. On the opening kickoff, all the way to the house goes Trey Hayes, the sophomore return man. 13 seconds into the game, and the Profs trail sits nothing. Trey Hayes there just gets it inside the five, and he turns it near side, and he had a lot of room to run, and he did it exactly. Trey Hayes, one of the top receiving options there for uh, Connor Berry, and it's, he shows it off with the speed there on the kickoff, and now Profs again at home have struggles. They allow a score with 13 seconds into this game. Now it's the fifth year senior Ryan Castle on for the PAT. And it is right through. Rowan trailing seven nothing, just like that. Justin, you know, again, this is a captain's team coming off an overtime loss. Rowan with a huge win at the final buzzer last week. And I, I think with momentum kind of on different sides, you couldn't have expected a more kind of flip of that right off the bat. Opening kickoff and Christopher Newport already with a 7 nothing lead. Yeah, Rowan's last, defense doesn't even get a chance. Yeah, to I mean, it. last week you saw Neymar's 16-25 you know, of the past game once Goldsboro went down. And he has to kind of respond here. He got the again, Hail Mary touchdown to Shane Martin, Dan Moth, that TCNJ game. But this is his real test. I mean, it's going to be, again, Christopher Newport, they got on the board early. 13 seconds to be exact. And Trey Hayes, that's his uh, fourth touchdown of the year. First kickoff return for a touchdown, but three receiving touchdowns as well. So we'll be seeing him a lot more as Prost is looking at this game. And so now it'll be the Prof's chance to answer. It's going to be Castle to send it away. Rowan with Karan Lewis back deep to return. Number 26, standing just inside his own 10 yard line. Kick is away, it's a short one. Taken by the Profs at about the 25. Ball is out, but recovered right there. And uh, it's A.J. Riker, the freshman return. Man back deep there to jump on the ball. Originally taken up by Matt Carlin, number 19, the tight end. Not used to fielding kicks, Justin. He thought he'd give it a try, and Profs will get just beyond the 25. Or they'll actually mark him right at the 25-yard line. Here to be in their first drive, and it is Nate Mayers, the freshman from Tinsway High School out of Swedesboro, New Jersey, about 20 minutes up the road here from Glassboro. Making his first start after he came in for the injured Tommy Goldsboro last week. Handoff goes to Tyshawn Bookman, and he'll go left tackle for a yard or two, and that'll bring up second down. Yeah, Bookman there gets the carry, he's going to his left, and 
We're going to see a lot of Bookman, a lot of Bakula today. It's going to be good effort and see what this cross offense do here in this first drive. So now Mayers with a trip set to his right. Play action. Ball comes out and he dives on it. It's going to be third and long for the Pros, but Justin, we talked about. Um, it, it's going to be tough with, with this weather today, kind of battling the rain, the precipitation. Ball's going to be slippery, and Mayers that time losing the snap coming out of the shotgun. We keep counting down. About a minute gone by here in this one. And so now Mayers on third down and 14 from his own 21-yard line. Trip set out to his right. Four receivers split out. Quick screen. Near side. Catch. There is Bain. And Rowan quickly going to have to go three and out on their opening drive. Shane Martin with the catch on the near side, but no date on the play. And here comes Parigi to punt for the first time this afternoon. And you have the man who took it all the way on the opening kickoff back deep in Trey Hayes. As Parigi gets it away, it's a short punt, shallow punt, takes a bounce. And Hayes will move over to field it, dive on it at about the 43 yard line. And so Christopher Newport will have very good starting field position here for their second drive. I, we, it's felt like a lot has happened already, Justin, but we're not even 90 seconds into this game. Play action on first down. They go right back to Hayes on the screen. He'll make the catch. Doesn't look like much of a gain that time. Senior quarterback Matt Jersky getting the start out of Lorton, Virginia. And you mentioned they had a quarterback start for them as well as a freshman through the first few games of the year did uh, Christopher Newport. Jersky led the end jack in passing yards and completion percentage last year. Takes the snap here on second down and nine, rolls right, points downfield. Now he'll try the sideline and he will gain a couple there as uh, is able to escape that time from bin number 94, Eric Hill, the junior edge rusher, setting the edge that time, keeping Dzerski in check. He'll bring up third down and eight with the captains five yards on their side of the field at their own 45. Big stop potentially here for Rowan, Justin. Get their defense off the field quickly. Rowan three and out on their first offensive drive. The trip set left. Here for Jersky, motions the running back and Gunner White into the slot to his right. Rowan showing blitz. Now they back up. Rush four. Jersky sitting in the pocket, throws across the middle, and it is caught for a first down. And that is the senior receiver, number 87, Kyle Lynch, who has the grab. And it's a fresh set of downs for the captains as they get to the Prost 43-yard line. It's a gain of 15 yards. Yeah, Lynch's fourth catch of the season, a big one. As you said, should have been a crucial stop there for the Prost, but now the captain's going to march here past midfield. They're looking to get on the board again, try to get, get a 14-0 game. Gunnar White in the backfield next to... Jersey. He's third in the conference in rushing behind James Farad, who again is out today for Rowan with a right hand injury. Empty set here for Jersey as White motions out of the backfield. Jersey pumps, fires, pass is caught at the 40 by White. Gunner White, a sophomore running back out of Virginia Beach. These captains coming up from Newport News, Virginia. It was a crazy game a couple of years ago between the Pros and Captains here in Glassboro. Christopher Newport in the final minute of the fourth quarter with a go-ahead touchdown knock off Rowan. So again, a four on the pitch and catch there. It's at second down and six. Man in motion is Hayes, and they give it to him on the sweep. Hayes is free up the right side across the 20, and he's... Knocked out of bounds there by John Perez across the 20-yard line. 
everything offensively involving Trey Hayes, even special teams wise, Justin, has been a positive so far for the captains, and they've gotten him involved early. Yeah, Hayes was their second leading receiver coming in, and he's showing it in the rush game, shows it off with the speed. He has it on the kickoff, and they are now inside the 20 yard line of the Profs, and they're looking like they're going to get on this board most likely again. Yeah, Trey Hayes, 12 catches for 233 yards coming into today. Second catch of the day there for him, or not a catch, but on that jet sweep. He'll pick up the first down play action here with a quick screen out to the left. That's caught by White. And White just gains about a yard on first down. You see, Justin, they like to utilize motion in this offense. Yeah, we're seeing that time. Gunnar White, third leading receiver for this team. He's already seen a couple of passes. That's the second reception of the night. Well, after you, I should say. It's a little, not a great day here, but... Yeah, we've seen them utilize everybody. Hayes, White, and they haven't even really used uh, too much of the rushing game here so far. Pistol set, Dzierski rolls out left side, fires back to the end zone. It's over everybody's head. Eric Bryant, that time in coverage, going one on one with the leading receiver for this Christopher Newport team, Colin Hart. Hart coming in. Uh, with the most yards out of any receiver in the conference, 418. 23 catches also ties him for first in that category. So Hart has been a huge threat in the receiving game. But now Pross have an opportunity here, Justin. Third down and nine for this Christopher Newport team. Seriously gonna go out of the empty set here. Jason Vieran is the freshman fullback on the right side of the line. White comes in motion. Zierstein drops back and he's got White up the sideline, but it's jumped in front of and picked off. Intercepted by Shamar Love and the Profs got a huge red zone turnover. Yeah, Shamar Love last week got a pick against TCAJ and he picks up again here. Good spot there. They try to get it off for the free touchdown, hand off on the left side and it would have Bit good if Shamar Love wasn't in the area, but Shamar Love gets it back for the Pross. That Pross had the ball. Shamar Love, the junior corner out of Bridgeton, New Jersey. Talked about it. Made a few big, big plays a couple weeks ago. And the interception there in the end zone will set up the Pross offense at their own three yard line, but it will get them the ball. Here with Nate Mayer standing in his own end zone. The give going to Nunez Bacua. Bacua is going to keep the ledge churning. Bacua gets nearly to the 10 yard line. A good gain on first down. And we saw Bacua really kind of uh, hit his stride in that McDaniel game uh, down in Maryland for the Prof's second game of the year, Justin. Yeah, McDaniel, he had two touchdowns. He also had his third touchdown here at home against Orsinus as it was played down here on the field for the Rowan. There's a Prof down. And uh, we'll see if we can identify who it is. Clock will stop. 9.08 left to go in this first quarter. Props with injuries on the offensive line, and we told you about as well. Banged up with no James Farah and Noah Brunati, Tommy Goldsboro on the sideline for this one. And uh, I think we can get a read on uh, who that is now. Is uh, coming off. We'll get to you to that in a second. Here's the give to Batua on second down. Batua spinning a few times where he gets bottled up at the 10 yard line. He'll pick up a yard, he'll make it. Third down and two officially is he'll work to the 11. But now with Price Bouchard, the senior center, arguably their best offensive lineman, Justin. He's been the starter here now for a couple of years, and to lose Bouchard early in the game is uh, going to be a key one for the Profs if he cannot come back in. Yeah, it's crucial as again, the line looking to protect Mayers here again. His first start here with the Profs. So third down and two, the give is to Bichua, and he will have first down yardage. And he breaks, 
actually breaks out of that scrum somehow and looks like he was going to be taken down around the 15 yard line which would have been good enough for a first down he keeps the lead shirt and, and slips free out to the 29 yard line so an 18 yard run there for Majua and a first down for the props he averaged eight yards per carry coming in and you see why there he can kind of shed some tackles he did it there would have got the initial first down but gets a lot more and now he's into the sideline here for Bookman. Here's Mayer's first pass attempt for him. Goes up the right sideline. Looked in there for Kevin Denden. And that went over his head and uh, incomplete. Coverage defensively there. Derry Lane, the sophomore corner, was on him, number 16. And so it'll be second and 10. But going back to Batua, he is a freshman out of Donovan Catholic. Can't wait for Little Ed Harbor. 13 rushes for. 53 yards and a couple of touchdowns in that McDaniel game. He also got into the end zone against Ursinus. As now Bookman getting the carry here is ripped down. Behind the line that time, Rowan going to be set up with a third and long as he loses a couple of yards and it'll be third and 12 here for Nate Mayers and the props. This Christopher Newport defense, Justin, the best scoring defense in the conference. They allow just under 16 points a game coming in. They're also the top scoring offense in the end, Jack, close to 32 points a game. Rowan sitting comfortably at 23 points a game, a little over. That's fourth best out of the eight teams, and uh, they'll be knocked back another five yards here for a false start. Cross with a mistake there. It's going to send him back. But we have seen, again, we've seen the running game implemented here again. Farrow out with the hand injury. It's going to be these two freshmen, Bookman and McCoola. We've seen McCool and Bookman have done it before here. Really on the road have shined well. And now, especially in a uh, bad weather day here at homecoming, get to see the same results here. Profs 2-0 on the road, Justin, but 0-3 here at Wacker Stadium in 2023. A big play for him here. Third and 17 on their own 22. Mayer's getting ready to fire. Four receivers split out. Throws over the middle. High was looked at that time for Shane Martin. And Peter Parigi will come out and punt for the second time. So Prof's dead. The first down on that drive, Justin, kind of working out of danger territory near their own end zone. But once they got to the 29-yard line, couldn't do much else. The initial first down is always good for the Profs. Is not really good on third down there. 16 for 52 coming into this one. So now after today, going to go down even more on the percentage. Parigi to punt. Gets it away, spiraling kick, and this one will sail out of bounds. We'll see where they mark it, but Hayes didn't even make an attempt at it. Six and a half to play here in this opening corner on homecoming Saturday here in Glassboro. We had a WGLS station manager, Derek Jones, uh, down pregame, announcing uh, some of the festivities. Last year it was nice and bright and sunny on homecoming. Profs defeated Kane in a thriller that came down to the final possession for the Cooters. Rowan got an end zone stop. He won that one 17 to 10. The trail 7 0 early on in this one as the div is to White and he's stood up by that Rowan defensive front. I mean, you look at what that front seven for the Profs have done so far. Just, it's a veteran group. I mean, you look at the linebackers, and Joe Rocabaldo, Vincent Marino, and then Nick Cerulli. All three guys are juniors. All three guys have been multi-year starters here in the program. That defensive line, always scary as well. Rowan going to rush four here with Dzierski on second and nine after a gain of one by White. Across the middle, ball is out, and the profs say they have it. And they do. The Profs with their second turnover here in the first quarter. Colin Hart made the catch across the middle and just had it knocked out. What a huge play there for Rowan. As now they'll get the ball adjusted on Christopher Newport's side of the 50. The Profs had two turnovers last week. They got both interceptions. This time, four fumbles to be a third of the season. It's a crucial one. This time, closer, obviously, towards 
the end zone here with Christopher Newport. As last time that pick there on the near side by Love was inside their own five. It looked like it was the junior linebacker Chris Rogers who knocked it free. And so now Rowan gonna be set up first and 10 at the captain's 38. And we've got a flag for the play and this will be another false start against the Profs, I believe, or maybe it'll be offside of the defense. No. On the profs, after all. And so they'll be knocked back five yards to the 43 yard line. Rain still coming down here in Glassboro. A light drizzle, but it has stacked as you look at the field, look at the track around the field. You see a lot of puddles, a lot of wet spots. Fuel conditions obviously being affected as well. Mayors here on first and 15 with the handoff. And that is Pachua up the middle to the 40. And I hope it up three yards, second and 12 here. Obviously, in this type of weather, Justin, props are going to look to run the ball probably two out of every three downs. They're not going to go to the air unless they need to. But you went out of the right of Bayers. Play action, they'll go here. Bayers drops back, throws, and again, it's high and through the hands that time of the safety. And Yasir Jeter, the sophomore number number three, right through his hands. Had an easy interception there, Justin, but props still have life here on this drive, third and 13. Yeah, on that one, I think if it was a uh, non-wet day, I think that would have been an interception going the other way for Christopher Newport, but the rain works to the benefit there on the pass there for Mayers, and now big spot third and 13 for him. Shane Martin's put out at the top of your screen to the left, trip set to the right. As Mayers drops back, throws over the middle, and he had Gordon. Corey Gordon had a step on the safety loaded Baker, but again, that slippery football, Justin, right out of the hands of Gordon, and the props are down the punt again here on Christopher Newport's side of the 50, which is going to make it stand even more as Peter Parigi comes out. Yeah, both sides uh, had the, the wrong side of there with the, uh, the slippery weather here, and worked out there on that. Would have been interception, and now that one dropped there. Gordon would have for sure had the first down. If he would have caught it. Profs looking over to the sideline. Getting that Treman in there. Play clock at 25, so they got time. Parigi just behind the 45-yard line. Didn't set to kick it away. Pressure comes. Line drive kick. Hayes is going to let it bounce, and that is a mistake. This is going to end up as a very good punt for Parigi. Pross will down it at the five-yard line. And so a, a nice one by Parigi there, just again with the conditions and the wind playing a huge factor, Justin. He thought, man, I'll just let this one slice right through. Now we have a post-punt penalty against Christopher Newport as well. And so they're going to be backed up right up against their own end zone here on this drive for the tactics. Yeah, that's on the roughing the kicker there on the oh, initial wow. punt. So. Oh, so Rowan's in a deep possession offensively. So a monster penalty against Christopher Newport. Roughing the kicker. Thank you, Justin. So props with second life. As now they've got it first and 10 at the captain's 26 yard line. Bookman in the backfield. They hand it off to him. He breaks a tackle, keeps it going, and is able to slither through across the 25 to about the 24 for a gain of a couple on first down. And now they get three officially. They get second and seven at the CNU 23 yard line. And uh, after the conclusion of the first quarter, Rowan did a honor uh, the uh, 1993 team that made the NCAA championship game. They uh, walked out with the team from uh, John Green uh, Team House onto the field today before the game. Here's Mayers, second and seven, throw to the right side. Denton has the catch, and he gets hit hard as he gets across the 20. He'll get to about the 18, but a huge hit that time defensively. That was Baker. Yeah, Baker put his body on the line. Shades like Cam Chancellor with the Seahawks. He put his body on the line and looked to keep 
but it's going to be a timeout here for Frost. It's like first timeout. I don't know. They didn't, they didn't announce if it was Newport or if it was Jay Porcy taking his uh, first time out of the half. 3.58 left to go. Yeah, this is Christopher Newport team that has allowed the least points in the conference up to this point. Profs have allowed the most points of any NJAC team. The third and two here for Nate Mayers and company. Four split out. Gordon and Martin at the top of your screen. Kevin Denden alone at the bottom. They hand it off to Bakua. Bakua is going to get to the 15, looking for that push from the offensive line. And he needed the 15 here to get the first down. And the officials are going to say that he got the first down the yardage. Chains will move. And the profit will be set up first and 10 now inside the red zone. Cool has been that third down back there. He worked to perfection there. He's been able to shed some tackles and keep the play alive, and that helps get the first down here inside the 16. First and 10. Mayers throws across the middle. Ball is deflected. He's looking for Gordon. It'll be second and 10 at the 16. Just for Newport, you've seen that secondary make plays so far here in this one. At that time, 19, Tazon Brown was the one who deflected that pass. A lot of tip balls here in this one early on for Nate Mayer. He's got to be careful. Here on second and 10. Handoff, Pachua. Goes right into the mob there. Pachua may have been not back the yard on that carry. We'll give him three, third and seven. He's able to push it across the 15-yard line. That's where the move up to the 12th. So third and six. Two and a half to go in this opening quarter. Profs hosting Christopher Newport here. Rowan at two and three. We're going to get to 500 with a victory. And, of course, seeking that elusive first home win in 2023. Here's Mayers on third down. Throwing back corner of the end zone. It is caught by Denton, but he was out of bounds. What a fantastic effort by Kevin Denton that time. Going right up over the top of Yasir Jeter, who was in coverage. Denton just couldn't get the feet down, and Rowan will bring out the field goal unit here. Denton tried his best there on that. Again, got, got his hands on the ball, made a good catch, but tough spot, back right corner of the end zone now. Look to get on the board cross for a four-point deficit. Sophomore Connor Batten is on for the try. It is up and it is good. So Batten puts it through and gets the props on the board. This is a seven to three game. Two oh nine to play in this first quarter. And uh, the Profs, although they would have liked seven there, getting on the board against this Christopher Newport team. Step in the right direction. Of course, Profs will receive the second half kickoff, but a lot of football to be played until then. So Peter Parigi will send it away now back to the captains. And the Profs is crucial to get points on the board after a second turn of their cause. And Outside of a 14 0 game, which it would have been if they didn't pick it off Shore Love down here. Now 7 3, just need another stop and another drive to get the lead back. Connor Batten with that field goal. Now 3 for 4 on the year. And Parigi, who had a really good punt the last time, kicks it off here. This one is really shallow. Yeah, those kickoffs are going to be a problem. Parigi upset with himself as Christopher Newport going to be set up. Very nice field position with that ball. Just all the precipitation really playing a factor there. Just can't really get a good grip on it. Captains will have it at their own 32-yard line here, first and 10. 
2 0 left to play. So Matt Dzierski out for another drive. First down, handoff to White. White bottled up quickly by the profs defensively. Cody Young in there for the stop. And White actually loses the yard, so credit Young with a tackle for loss there. Second and 11 at the 31. Speaking better White. Just kind of had a hard time here. Obviously, bad weather conditions, but the profs. Front seven have worked against White here pretty well up to this point. Give up the middle. And that time it was uh, Zierski taking it himself. Stop made by number 55, Josh Ortiz. Nose tackle right there in the middle of that front for the profs. It'll be third down and five. Just over a minute to play in this first quarter. Would be a crucial stop here for the profs here on third down. Get the ball back potentially. Absolutely. Third and five here at the 37. Zierski feeling the pressure. Fires and it is caught across the 50 yard line. Catch is made, that is Trey Hayes. And it's gonna be first and 10 here for the captains at the cross 49. So it would have been a good style, another good third down pass by Dzierski. Newport now just past midfield exactly with clock running it down here in this first quarter. Looks like they get one more playoff. Fresh set of downs. White with the carry and he breaks through into the second level. Gunner White is home for the touchdown. 49 yards. And the captain strike just as the scoreboard hits triple zeros at the end of the first quarter, 13 to three. Yeah, one last play there before the quarter ends and Gunnar White capitalizes, breaks through the hole on the right side. And they outrun the Prof secondary and now it's gonna be most likely 14 to three. Gunnar White, the third leading rusher in the end jack coming in, He's made his presence felt. Here's Ryan Castle on for the extra point. Last play officially of the first quarter is up and good. And it is 14 to three, the lead for Christopher Newport after 15 minutes, Justin. And quite an interesting first quarter for the Profs. They forced two turnovers, but they're still trailing by two scores here as we open up the second quarter. Yeah, the two scores they allowed were two big ones. The one kickoff, 90 plus yards there from Hayes, and then the other one, get Gunner White on just under 50 yard rush there with less than 14 seconds left in the quarter. So you did get two turnovers rewarded to you, but you only got three points on the board compared to the 14. Get two big plays with a 50 yard run and a 95 yard kick return. Uh, some announcements right now for that 1993 championship team for the Profs. Uh, more info on them as this uh, quarter goes along. Just heard 1993 team gonna be put into the uh, Glassboro State Hall of Fame. Rowan University, this is their centennial homecoming just in 100 years ago. The school was founded as a Glassboro Normal School in 1923. Kickoff is out to the right, gonna be taken here at the 40 yard line. Held on to that time. Jackson Ferrante, number 41, you see him there. Made to the catch on special teams. Didn't see a lot of short kickoffs today, Justin. 
unfair catches there by, that time by Jackson. Smart one. Almost bobbled it, but he kept it there. And now, cross on the 41 yard line of the road. Gotta try to march down the field to get it into the end zone. So here's Nate Mayers out for the opening drive of the second quarter. First and 10, give us to Pacula. Pacula off left tackle, dives forward for about four yards. Well, with two freshmen in the backfield, Buckman and Pachua, as well as the freshman Mayers under center. And that was kind of the pivot that you expected maybe at some point in the season to see, Justin. Obviously, you never want to expect an injury to a guy like James Farah, but you know you have the senior Husley at quarterback last year. He leaves, and it was just kind of a a, a, a new world for Jay Corsi and Laprosse after having Husley as a three-year starter. Pachua up the middle. Breaks a tackle at the 45, stays on his feet. And Bajua is going to work to call it the 48 for another five yards. And it'll be third down and two here for the Profs. The 50 to Dale. Profs don't want to open up this corner with a three now. Yeah, Pula again, he sheds tackles like it's nothing. That time would have been two yard game. They sit about five and now. Got a huge spot here. Looking a good score here. As again, right after the, the end of the first quarter, Captain's got on the board with their second touchdown. And the Profs, big two yards here, needed here on third down. Rowan is two of six on third down to this point. Like you said, Justin, big one here, just shy of midfield. Andrew Spinello in motion to the right side. They hand it off to Bachua. Bachua getting his uh, shoulder pad held as he'll get to the 45-yard line. A seven-yard rush and a first down for the Profs. You've seen they have leaned on Bachua as you see him there. Talked about his shoulder pad. Go over to the sideline, get that fixed up. As Tyshawn Buckman comes back into the game here for the Profs. Buckman there on the first two downs usually, but every time it's been the third down and short, two or three times they converted, and it's been a cooler run. So now Buckman to the right of Mayers on first and 10, and the snap is buffed. Looks like just a, a bad release there. And Myers recovers the fumble snap. So Myers dives on it, but the props are gonna lose a couple, actually lose four yards. Tough break for the Profs there, but again, slippery ball there on, on the snap. Glad it's only four yards that you lost, but obviously the kid you just got from Bacola now back four yards. So now Mayer's on second down and 14. Rowan to the right, slips away from the pressure. He's still got it. Goes back across his body. He's looking for Buckman. Couldn't hang on. And it'll be third and 14. And that one, try to roll it out, try to see you play kind of downfield right there, just wasn't gonna work, so he tried to flip it off to Bookman. Instead again, obviously the sack there. This Roman offensive back. line, Justin, has been banged up as well. I mean, you saw Bouchard come out of the game. And now left to right. As he leads the group. It's Deron Cooney, normally plays guard in at center. Robert Stashek, the uh, right guard. Chase Foster, number 77 on the right side is the right tackle. Cody at center and the two guards up the middle are Connor Smith and Brady Smith. Referees discussing some post play here. Connor and Brady Smith, by the way, no relation. 63 and 64, the two guards right now here for the Profs. A third down and 14. From the 50, Mayers dropping back. He's got pressure, and actually the ball was knocked free and picked up by the captains. Rumbling down to the 10-yard line with it is Andrew Warsham. And Christopher Newport is going to be set up first at goal as Warsham 
I honestly didn't even see the ball come out of Mayer's hand there. Perhaps Worsham got a, a hand on it, or Mayer's just lost the snap there with the slippery football. But either way, Christopher Newport with a scoop and a near score there, Justin. But now they'll have first and 10 at Rowan's nine yard line, a first and goal. Yeah, Worsham off the edge blitz kind of was really not guarded and just got really not, not too much of a follow, just kind of really just picked it up right out of the hand of theirs, not even, and he was just one tackle away from getting the end zone there. Now look at this, look at that trip set at the top of your screen here for Christopher Newport. Three guys bunched up, no one to the right here for Zierste. It's gonna be a direct slap, Zierste with a cut back and a juke on the left side. And he'll pick up about five yards here to the four yard line. So they go with the keeper there on first and goal. And now it'll be second and goal coming up. CNU with the ball on Rowan's four. And it's just bad no break here for the Prost. You can give up three and still hang around in this game, but 21 to three, it's gonna be tough. Especially still 11 minutes more here in this half. Seen two long touchdowns, and we've seen really CNU has had a hard time in the short game getting the exit, but I only need four yards for another score. Zirsty again takes it himself right up the middle. Zirsty will dive and he'll get to about the three. He'll gain a yard or so, and it'll be third and goal. This prop's talked about getting pressure on Zirsty, just disrupting things. In the middle, Profs come in, second least sacks by any end jack team, 14 on the year. Two teams, actually both these teams, the bottom two in terms of pass rushing in the conference. In motion goes Hayes as Zierski keeps it himself yeah, up the middle, he dives for the goal line, and he's going to be short. Carter Williams makes the stop. Josh Ortiz in there as well, the nose tackle. And so it's going to be fourth and goal. They put him at the one. So the captain's three feet from the end zone are going to go for it, obviously, on fourth and goal. And the Profs, if they can make the play here, Justin, it'll be a huge goal line stop. Yeah, as I said uh, just about a minute ago, it's it's been long scores here for Tristan Newport, and now big fourth down a goal, one yard to go. Got to watch the keeper here with Dzirsti again taking the snap. He does go right up the middle, tries to leap over the pile. He's brought down. Christopher Newport thinks they have a touchdown, and they do, but the profs are furious. They're saying no way he got in there. Rowan coaching staff trying to calm everyone down, but the profs are not happy with that call. Dzirsti breaks the plane, and it's a 20 to three lead here for Christopher Newport. It is risky there. Might have barely got a hand over. Calls confirmed touchdown. That is now confirmed touchdown, but again, they're all that fourth and one, really. It's, Zierski just had to get the ball over the plate. He does that, and now it's gonna look to be an 18 point game after this point after touchdown. Extra point is up and good. Ryan Castle, a three for three on those today. 9.57 to go in this second quarter, and the Profs trailing now 21 to three. One of uh, four and Jack contest going on today. TCNJ and Kane kicked off at one o'clock. William Patterson on the road against Ursinus. That was also a 1 p.m. kickoff in Collegeville, Pennsylvania. And Montclair State hosting Salisbury a couple hours up north. That was also a one o'clock kickoff. So this one, the uh, the late game in terms of the Ed Jacks late today, two o'clock kickoff. 21 to three. Crawford get it back now, and offensively, Justin, they have to have an answer for Christopher Newport. Yeah, we've seen really the run game obviously has been strong, but they've strung a couple of three and outs, and they need to get marched out of the field here. Yeah, another short kick, and this is taken at about the 37-yard line. 
catch is made. Perante again, who caught it on the last short kickoff. And so here we go. This is a kind of prove it moment here for Nate Mayers. Freshman quarterback down 21 to 3. In an environment like this, can he get something going for the profs offensively? Profs had it in the red zone. Settled for a field goal. First and ten. Give us to Bookman. And the ball is out. Props dive on it. Spinello luckily gets back there. Covering it up. But Bookman, as he was about to go down, had the ball jarred loose. It's tough to hang on to weather like this, but Props losing 11 yards there. Pushed back to the 26. The last 12 offensive plays for the Crofts have been fumbles, one by Mayers, and then right there by Bookman. But good thing that they recovered that one, but now second to 21. Pachua back to the game. Hand off to him on second and long. Pachua across the 25, still on his feet, just dragging defenders. Pachua still going. And he's finally brought down at the 31 for a five yard game. He's a violent runner, Justin. I mean, he puts his head down and he hits the hole and goes. Not afraid to turn it back either, though. Chua Jaden sits there to make it third and 15. Yeah, he is the bigger frame back here for his cross team. Obviously not the same frame as a Farah, but to the two freshmen running backs, Buckley obviously has the more agility, more speed, but Makula, he kind of has a mixture of both, and we see that here today. Nine carries for 46 yards for Lunez Bakua, the fourth. At this point, third and 15, Myers under pressure, and he is tripped up and brought down. Christopher Newport making a play defensively. Devin Lorman, sophomore edge rusher, got to him. As Myers was struggling with his footing there, and here's Parigi to punt it. Yeah, another tough drive there from the profs. Uh, eight more minutes left here in this first half. Just looking to avoid Christopher Newport getting on the board again here. As they've scored that last drive. Off the Parigi punt. Takes a nice bounce for the props. It'll settle at about the 25 where it's down. As the rain begins to intensify. Expecting uh, showers all afternoon. And uh, us too, as well as our entire RTN crew, is uh, bundled up. You're up above Richard Wacker Stadium. Rain's still dead to us, though. This, uh, this big overhang isn't doing much. We push through. Christopher Newport, new set of downs at their own 25. 7.48 to play in the half. The props needed anything defensively. Just a quick drive offensively from Newport is what this Rowan defense really needs. So here comes Hayes in motion. They faked it to him. They hand it off to White, and White We'll have no game here on first down. So we look at Rowan offensively. Just 33 total yards to this point. Just one completion. That was the five-yard catch by Denden. They've ran it 14 times. This defense has been on the field a lot. So now it's Zierski with five men split out wide out of the empty set here, second and eight. Takes it. Up the middle he goes, and he is ripped down immediately. Josh Ortiz says, no, sir. A little bear crawl laughter by Josh. As Zierski that time loses a yard, and it'll be third and nine. He's there untouched, just gets all of the Zuski there off the middle, and now a big spot here, third and nine. Another opportunity for the profs to stop Christopher Newport in the tracks. So third and nine, Zuski fates it, steps up, and he is wrapped up. 
Trying to see who got there first for the props, and they will credit it to Joe Rocabaldo. We talked about one of those three junior linebackers for the props. So a couple of big defensive plays made there by Rowan. Defense, although they've been out there a lot, and they've had to battle through this weather, Justin. Looked resilient there on that drive. Rowan didn't get it back. Clock continues to move, 5.45 to go in this second quarter. Yeah, easy the pros best defensive drive there as now they're looking to get the ball back and get the end zone, something they have not done today. They did get close, obviously, in that one drive, but looking to do it here. Baylor Gallagher is the punter. This is a boomed kit that will roll to the 26 of the profs. 5.21 left to go. I mean, this is the drive if you're Jay and Corson. You're telling your offense. You know, go out there, shoot clock, down 21 to three, gotta find a way to get points too. Yeah, and you do get the ball, the props do on the uh, second half kickoff. As how as we know, the initial kickoff was returned for a touchdown by Christopher Newport. So if you get a touchdown here, you, you're down 11, and then if you get the ball and get a score out of the half, you would be crucial for the props. Pat Lanchetta, offensive coordinator, getting his group out there. First and 10, give us to Bacua. Bacua, close to the 35. It'll be a good gain on first down. Second and short here for the profs. As they'll mark him down at the 35. Nine yard pickup for Bacua, who continues to run it well. And actually, they'll hand him a first down as they say he gets 10 from the 26 to the 36. Rowan moving a bit quickly here as they move the chains. 450 to play. Mayers. Hand off again. Bichua trying the left side. Bichua stutter step. And now he's got room across the 50. A hard hit out of bounds just shy of the 45. But again, Bichua just does not go down on first contact. And he's a big back. About six, one. 215 pounds, he's a bowling ball, Justin. He's, he's rolling, I mean, right there. Stutter step, usually down probably two or three yards, turns into another 10 plus yard run, and you see McCulla implemented really nicely, kind of question, because you really saw a lot of fair, I saw a lot of bookmen, but McCulla after the week two, week three, hasn't been a lot of hit time on the field. Clock continues to move for another First down run by Bichua. Now it's Bookman. Bookman is hit and brought down that time. That is Yashir Jeter, number three. The corner stepping up, making the stop. One yard game for Bookman. That was uh, his fifth carry of the day. He's gone five times, and Bichua has ran it 12 times. Bookman stays in after a one yard pickup, second and nine. Rowan at the captain's 44-yard line. Mayers play action, pressure right in his face, lets it go, and it's broken up. But a flag is out as Corey Gordon was tangled up there on the back end. Kendrick Braxton, linebacker, deep there in coverage. Derek uh, Sarpond as well, the senior safety. And they did it on Sarpon. And an automatic first down for the Prof. 15 yard penalty on the PI call. Corey Gordon was the intended target. And I mean, the Prof with only one completion today, Justin, they'll take that. I mean, you move the ball through the air, not a completion, but pass interference, just as good. 15 yards there for the Profs as they move across the CLU 30 yard line at the 29. First and 10, Mayers. Gives it to Batua. Batua there for about five yards to the 24. Three and a half to go. Batua keeps chugging all along and he does it right there. Another five yard run. It's a closer, closer here into this red zone and near the end zone here for the profs. Again, it would be a big score here if they could get in the end zone. Again, they get the second half kickoff, so momentum would be on their side. Second and five. Mayers gets the slap. Give us to Batua again. Batua 
falling forward to the 20, about a yard shy of the first down. The 19 yard line to Dale here on third down at two. Matua may hit the ground at the 21 officially. Two and a half here. Left in this first half for Nate Mayers and the profs. Trailing 21 to three, but a big opportunity here. Petula on the carry. The left side gets to the 15. They're leading on Petula now for six more yards there. Only five, we'll get to the six team. Petula really carrying it well. Now 15 rushes for 96 yards. Looking for his first 100 yard game of the season, but talked about eight yards per carry coming in. Justin is averaging now near seven today. Under two minutes to go, Mayers. On first down, is it straight out to the right? Denman makes the catch, slips away from one defender. Flag is out. And you got to hope for Rowan that's not a holding call. Corey Gordon was dead into it on that far side with a captain's defender. And uh, we'll check the laundry here after the screen pass to Denman. And it is a holding call against the profs. It's on Shane Martin that time. So first down and 19 now here for the profs. Minute 40 to play. At the 25, Mayers handoff. Petula spinning and brought down. Just trying to get back to the line of scrimmage that time as the clock continues to roll. The timeout taken here by the profs. You can find your driver's license at the blue tent next to the ticket booth. Jay Corsi Burden. His time out here. Cross down 21 to 3, minute 26 left, Justin. Second down at 20, and that holding call again, a, a real killer for this Prost team that with Petula on this drive running the ball so well. That holding call is, is a killer. Second and 20 now, not a ton of time to work with. Rowan might be forced to go through the air here. Yeah, exactly, because now instead of 10 yard runs you need, you need 20 yards to get here on this on this down and see what you can do. Mayers is to the throw here, lobs it deep up the left side and it's caught! Denton inside the 10! Just the second completion today for Nate Mayers, but it's a big one. Pross will have first and goal here with a minute 13 to go. The clock stops, and they put Denton officially at the six-yard line. Yeah, great catch by Denton. If he just stepped to his right, most likely he probably would have got it to the end zone because he was just near the sideline, and great wide open pass there from Mayers. And now, instead of it being second and 20, he got first to goal at the six. 20-yard completion. First and goal, Batula with the carry, lowers his head, Batula is in! Touchdown, Bros. As Nunez Batula, his big day on the ground continues, and he is into the end zone with a minute and six seconds to play in this first half, and Justin the Bros now with a chance to close the lead to 21-10. Through there again, breaks the initial tackle. Really, the guy, one of the defenders there from Christian Newport got right through. The pool over the shoulder. It does what he does best, breaks the tackles through. And now, after his PAT, will be down 11 points. Connor Batten on for the kick. Made the field goal earlier, and this time his PAT is up and good. 106 to play, a 21 10 game here in Glassboro. And Nunez Bakula, 17 carries for 102 yards. 
an average of six yards a carry, and he finds the end zone to make this game at least more manageable here, Justin. Yeah, much more manageable. Obviously, a minute six left here in this quarter, but it's going to be a big spot here for the Frost. Rowan set to send it away, and again, you got to be careful. Yeah, Trey Hayes returned the opening kickoff, yep. 94 yards for a touchdown. Peter Parigi sits and has stuck to ticket it short, and of course, the weather played a bit factor in that as well. Rain has been coming down now for two, three hours straight here in Glassboro as we're just across the three o'clock hour. And with a minute six left, Parigi's just going to squib this one. Hayes picks it up in front of his 20, and Hayes will work across the 30 to about the 32. So 61 seconds to go in the half. Profs trailing by 11. And defensively, Justin, they had those big plays made on that last drive. They need to do that again here. Get out, get out of the half and just go to the locker room. You get the second half kickoff. Profs really can't afford to give up any sort of points here. Yeah, we've seen two long touchdowns for Christopher Newport today, and it has been realistically, again, a lot of Christopher Newport offensively. And last drive, we saw really the opposite, where the Profs kind of dominated, got a three and out, and now with a minute one, just can't allow any long touchdown, either passing or on the run. So first and 10 for Dzierski at the 33. Lone back is white, and the div is to him. He'll cut it off the right side, is free. Now it goes right back up the middle to about the 37 for a four yard game. Christopher Newport with all three of their timeouts, and I'll let the clock run here. 45 seconds, and I think they might be content with just going into the half here up by a couple of stores. Zierstein now to go over the sideline, look for the call. Paul Crowley, the head coach of this captain's team. Crowley in his second season at the helm as head coach. And uh, he'll dial up a run here for Gunner White across the 40 as the final five seconds here in the corner will come off the board. And actually we'll have a stoppage with four seconds left. We'll take a timeout taken by Christopher Newport. Ball is at the 42. That should have been not even a bit of timeout. I think Jay Corsi wants to say that, yeah, the ball, the clock's gonna start on the whistle. Now both teams are just gonna head out to the locker room. Oh, it's still four seconds up on the scoreboard, but I think the clock was just supposed to keep running there. There was no timeout. And so that is the first half, Justin. Rowan trailing 21 to 10. A really interesting half for the profs as the conditions get worse here in Glassboro. But that late score by Petula, they go into the locker room down 21 to 10. This is a winnable game for the profs still. It is. And again, after the second half in the locker room, they have to come out, really get it on the board again and do what you can do best. Obviously, we saw the score with Petula. And it's going to be a big response here. Coming down to 21-10 and trying to come all the way back. It's going to be a hard task against this Christopher Newport team. Rowan trailing 21 to 10 at halftime here in Glassboro. We'll have a homecoming festivities down on the field during the break. So keep it right here on Rowan Athletics. Aaron Hook and Justin Locke will be back for a second half action in about 20 minutes. Face down, pop your head in particular, and that's your scenes, baby. Pull your 
Under the direction of Professor Megan Cooney, led by drum majors Aiden Baxter, Aaron Bonner, and Julia Zoe, please welcome your Rowe University Pride and Props Marching Band.
The 50s and 60s became a little bit held as the revolutionary time period for all music lovers. The time period of glass, the origins of rock and roll, folk rock, and little blues, but an often overlooked musical genre was also dominating the charts. A musical genre called Motown. The Motown era brought us such superstars as the Supreme, the Temptation, the Four Tops, and of course, the Bandellas, who were our next top hit dancing in the street. Which made us give a shout out to our wonderful city from we love, Philadelphia. So get on up and dance in the street with us doing this too.
As you know, Rowan University is celebrating its centennial, 100 years forever forward. For today's halftime presentation, please focus your attention on the player entrance to the left of the scoreboard. One of the university's oldest traditions began in 1958 to honor public education in New Jersey. For years, our student runners completed a relay from Trenton to our Glassboro campus. They carried it towards symbolizing the privilege of knowledge and education. For today's centennial celebration, a team of 12 students, alumni, and employees ran a 28-mile circuit symbolically linking the university's campuses in Camden, Stratford, Sewell, and Glassboro. The team included, from alumni, Toby Brune, Colin Cardona, Daniel Cardona, Ernie Holzheimer, John Ratcliffe, Juan Sanchez. Employees, Janine Down, Amy Hoke, and Peter Radigan. Current students, first year history and education major, Quinn Cardona, Rowan Virtual School of Osteopathic Medicine student, Sandra Wilson. As the torch makes its way around the stadium, we honor generations of educators and students who dedicated themselves to achievement and serving others. Joining us on the field to celebrate today, our alumnus and Rowan Board of Trustees member, Tom Gallia, Athletic Director, Dr. John Giannini, Dean of Students, Kevin Kett, and Alumni Board President, J.J. Vogel. And now for the ceremonial torch passing. Student athletes from the Rowan track and field teams, senior Nana Ajimong and junior Jasmine Broadway. Pass the torch to alumnus torch runner Peter Oteri, class of 1962, as Peter passes it to Rowan President Ali Hushman, and finally to SGA President Brianna Reagan.
Ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow morning, Grove University will honor a class who will be shown as the class of 2023 into its Athletics Hall of Fame. Two of those individuals are here today. From football, a two-time NJAC Offensive Player of the Year and an all-conference quarterback for four consecutive seasons. From the class of 2002, Eddie Joe Hessen, Jr. Also from basketball, he was an All-American and an All-Conference selection in both seasons at Rowan. From the class of 2002, Mo Davis. And from football, an All-American linebacker and an NJAC Defensive Player of the Year from the class of 1996, Dr. LeRoy Royal Jones. Congratulations to our newest members of the Shirley O'Day, Joyce Solomon, Rowan Glassboro State Athletics Hall of Fame. Yard line. An interesting halftime break trying to battle this persistent uh, weather here in Glasper. I, I would say the rain is much more of a, a light shower, but it is just non stop the last two, three hours, and it's uh, affecting uh, our sight a little bit down on the field, but we're pushing through, and Rowan trailing 21 to 10 down a bit store at the end of that first half. First play of the second half, Nunez Batula, over 100 yards rushing and a touchdown in that first half. Gets the carry, and again, Justin, another good run for him, about eight yards on first and 10 as Christopher Newport has a man down. He didn't walk up, so he's to go is a good sign. And that was uh, the freshman nose guard, Sean Sanders, who is down. And it's an interesting kind of defensive front for Christopher Newport. You see they got the three guys up on the line there. And then they got a position called, they like to call it a rover, a guy who will rush the passer, also drop back in coverage. That's the last guy on the far side of the line is Pachula with the carry. And uh, he will have first down yardage as he just makes it to the chains. 
And first down, Profs. Uh, again, that late score really kind of kept them in this game, Justin. And now 21 to 10, if they can find points, it's a one store game. Yeah, momentum is on their side now. And again, if they can get a, a touchdown here, you turn a game that was initially an 18 point game into a possible five or six. Out to the left on the screen, Spinello is dragged down. And he will lose a few there. The second down for the profs. You look at Nate Mayers in that first half. Just two of ten passing, Justin, but he had that big 20-yard completion up the sideline to Kevin Denden, and that set up Bichula for the rushing touchdown. Bichula stays out there in the backfield to the right of Mayers on second and 12. Bichula with the give and across the 45 to about the 43. It'll be third down and long here for the profs. Actually, more to 47, I'll say. Sorry, I got my, got my numbers mixed up. So he's to the 47 for a three yard gain, and it's third and nine. A couple minutes out by here in the second half. Profs again have not won at home this season. 0 3 at Wacker Stadium, 2 0 on the road. And a bit third down here. Mayers, clean pocket, fires deep right side, and it is broken up. Was looking for Denden, who looked like he had about half a step there on Logan Baker, senior safety in coverage. We've seen Baker made a few plays today, and that time with the pass breakup will force the props to punt. Peter Parigi will come out and send it away. Trey Hayes waiting for it. Back deep, hanging out at about his own 15-yard line. Yeah, tough drive there for the Profs. Wish you would have got at least a score, but now got to kick it off. Fourth punt, punt of the day for Parigi. He takes a bounce in front of the 25. It'll roll over to the Profs' sideline, and they'll just knock it out of bounds there at about the 23-yard line. So a nice punt there by Parigi. 12-20 to play in the third, and comes Christopher Newport out for their first offensive drive of this second half. And we kind of saw the dual threat ability of Matt Dzirsky, the quarterback, Justin, running in uh, for that touchdown that made it a 21-3 game at that point. But, I mean, passing as well, Dzirsky through the air, efficient, 6 of 8. He did throw that interception to Shamar Love in the end zone. If he eliminated that mistake, Justin, we could have a totally different game on our hands. Yeah, the Profs did capitalize on that one, but it, it did result in some a field goal later down the line. Handoff is to Gunner White, and White tried the left side here for about four yards. Out of the uh, Glassboro faithful, now uh, making a business decision. Getting out of Wacker Stadium a little bit early, and we hope they all can uh, tune in when they get back home nice and safe. Here on Rowan Athletics, Aaron Hook, Justin Lott, our terrific RTN crew handling the production today. Got everything set up, everything up and working despite the weather conditions. As the rain continues to come down in Glassboro, second and seven. Handoff is again to White, and he is wrapped up. Prof's defensive line in there, Josh Ortiz again. He's gonna make it third and long here for the captains. Ortiz has gotten into that backfield a couple of times here. Did it, and then one drive that was their best drive. It set up that eventual touchdown by McCool later. But Ortiz, big stop here now, third and eight. Big opportunity for the Profs to get the ball back. Here goes Christopher Newport. Makes it third and eight. Christopher Newport on their own 25. Rowan going to rush four here on third down, and they get to Zizersky. Josh Ortiz in there for the sack. Donnie Clifford brought the pressure as well, and Ortiz on back-to-back -back plays, making his presence felt. Bid number 55 down there on the sideline. His teammates are letting him know. Props to get the ball back, and Really, these last two, three possessions, Justin Rowan defensively 
have been really sound. And now they're gonna force a punt. Here from Baylor Gallagher standing at his own five yard line. Gallagher, the left footed punter gets it away. It's a good punt. Paul Ginty is gonna have to go all the way back to his own 30 and he is immediately knocked down there. And the profs forcing Gallagher to punt it at his own five, Justin. Despite this weather, he's going to pin the props inside their own 30 at about their own 28-yard line. Yeah, it's got to be a good feeling by Gallagher there. Yeah, it's getting, the offense did get this, the drive that they wanted against this props defense, and now the props got 10 minutes here in this third quarter, and obviously, as well as the fourth quarter, to get chip away this lead down 11, 21 to 10. 10 minutes on the dot left to go in this third quarter. Here's Stabilia, the full back in motion. Left to right across the line. Handoff is to Petula, and he breaks the 30, gets to the 32 for a three-yard gain. Nunez Petula, the fourth. That was his 20th carry, and he's up to 116 yards on the ground. Had that eight-yard touchdown rush. Right at the end of that first half. Roffs again coming into this one off that thrilling win on the road last week in Ewing, New Jersey, 9-7 over TCNJ. But the div again to Matua, and Matua this time's knocked back. He'll lose probably two or three yards, and he'll go right back to the original line of scrimmage. It'll bring up third and ten for the Profs. But, you know, Nate Mayers having to come into that game, Justin, really having his signature moment early in his career. The freshman throwing the walk-off touchdown, Knocked in the air a couple of times. Shane Martin comes down with it. And he really, you know, although they've leaned on Bichula, he's had to keep his cool in this game. Had a couple throws early on in the game, get tipped and nearly intercepted. But seems like Mayers has kind of settled down a little bit and found his stride. He's going to need a big throw here on third and 10. Cross with three split out wide. Corey Gordon, the lone man on the bottom of your screen. Mayers drops back, looks for Gordon. Pass is short. And here comes the punt unit once again for the Profs. Both teams exchanging punts through the first three possessions of this second half. Yeah, tough drive there. Tries to get the pass there to Gordon. Just low, again, slippery ball. Hard to get pinpoint your passes there to the lead receiver, Gordon. But now, got to put it back away. Took a minute and a half there on the drive. Send it back to Christopher Newport. Rigi, end over end kick. Bounces at the 45. And it'll take another good roll here for the Profs as this one will get all the way down to the 20-yard line. Another good flip of field position there for the Rowan Special Teams Unit. Peter Parigi has been pretty money putting the ball today. And it'll be first and 10 for the captains at their own 20-yard line. The yard punt there by Parigi. If that move is up to seven days a week, follow them on social media at Promise Look at Parigi coming in, fifth best in the conference in net punting. Baylor Gallagher, who we saw have a great punt for Christopher Newport a moment ago, second in terms of net average. First and 10, Zerski's pass is gonna be short of Gunner White, his intended target on the screen pass. 8.15 to play, it'll make it second and 10. Yeah, we touched on the pass again, it's gonna be hard for both sides and getting after even more and more rain coming down here. It's almost impossible to get the passes where you wanted to go and that one just short there by Zerski. So second down. Second and 10, White is the lone back behind Nazirski. And he'll get it here on second down. White keeping it moving to about the 23, three yard gain, third and seven coming up. Told you uh, Profs playing in one of four and Jack games today. William Patterson hosting, or actually at Ursinus today in Collegeville, Pennsylvania, 26-15. The Pioneers trailing there. Salisbury on the road against Montclair State with a big victory, 31-12 over the Red Hawks up in Montclair, New Jersey. 
Kane hosting TCNJ in Union as well. We'll get you that score in a moment. For now, it's third and seven, and the Davis to Gunner White, and the Profs again going to push White back and force yet another three and out here. We've seen four three and outs to start this second half, Justin. Defense has been king through the first eight minutes or so. Yeah, I mean, again, coming out of the half, I mean, again, the rain hasn't stopped at all, so it's going to be really hard to get the passing game going, try to get the run there with White, and White, besides that big run he had, that 50-yarder for the score, he's had a tough time kind of get through this defensive line here for the Profs, and now get another drive, only a minute and a half, so go back to the Profs side. Gallagher again to punt. Just another line drive that he gets away. Takes a high bounce at about the 35, and Jinty gonna run up about five yards with it, close to the 40. It'll be good field position on this drive here for Rowan. That TCNJ final, by the way, 27 to nothing. They win it over Kane. So the Lions bouncing back from a heartbreaking loss last week to the Pross, getting to two and four with the victory. Kane still winless in 2023 after the loss today, 0 and six. Pross will have them three weeks from now in Union. As here's Mayers on first and 10, Profs starting at their own 40. Bichuo with the carry, and he'll get to the 45. Five yard game for Bichuo. Kendrick Braxton, the senior, number 11. He plays that kind of rover position we were talking about for this Christopher Newport defense. He's gonna shift everywhere, play a little back to the secondary, he'll rush the passer. Be a guy in coverage as well. Gutiel with the carry this time, not much. On second down and five, perhaps got back to the line. And they give him a yard to the 46, third and four coming up for the Profs, but injured Christopher Newport player. Love the timeout. So you're gonna look at the prof sideline there. A unit that was down 21 to three in this game, Justin, but now, especially the way their defense is playing, you know, you gotta have hope. And Cedric Dawkins, his defensive unit for this prof's team has done such a good job opening up the second half. Really not letting Christopher Newport get any momentum. Yeah, I mean, you look at it, it's it's three and out, three and out. Maybe a first down here or there, we see it again. Four drives back to back have been three and outs. And Cross looking to chase that here. They get Cooley here with five yard run and then a yard is right there. Now you're third and four. It's a big spot for the Pross. Again, if you can keep it, Christopher Newport always scored 21. You got to score 12 to win this game. It's, it's two scores, however you see it. Two touchdowns or a bunch of field goals down the line. You got to get the good drives together. And they got to do it here on a, at least a four yard game. So third and four for Nate Mayers. Trip set to his right, drops back, clean pocket, up the sideline, ball is tipped and incomplete. And again, it's Logan Baker in coverage, that time one-on-one -on -one with Andrew Spinello. Ball was batted high up in the air. And, well, this is a familiar sight. Justin Prosser to bring out their punting unit. It'll be the fifth punt in five possessions here in this second half of football for uh, both sides combined, obviously. Parigi. Get set to kick it away here. It's one that'll spin and take a bounce and roll inside the 20 and out of bounds in the 18. That's been the key, Justin. Rowan, although they're getting stopped offensively, they have flipped the field position almost perfectly here against Christopher Newport. Not letting them get any free yards, you know, start at the 35, 40. No, they've pinned them inside their own 25 a few times here so far. AC's yeah, some good punts, but Again, the Rays not helping really either side, and the Profs kind of wish they would have the 21 10 lead because then after that, you just need to keep your defense going how you are. But got to get a little stop here, get the ball back, and get in the end zone or get it up the upright somehow, some way. First and 10, Zierski hands it off. Gunner White is wrapped up. Ball came out for a second, but he's right there to recover. 
Profs at 10 in there defensively before White can even pick which hole he wants to burst through. Cody Young, number seven, you see him there, made the stop initially. Ball came out as well. Couldn't tell if it was Young who uh, jarred it loose, but he does make the tackle after just a yard gain on the carry by White, second and nine. 4.50 left to go in the third quarter. With most of Wacker Stadium cleared out here, Jazirski with a low snap, hands on it, it rolls right. He's got room. Jazirski looking downfield, now fires and incomplete. Had to go across his body that time, looking for Gunner White out of the flat. And White could not hang on, so it'll be third down at nine. Four and a half left to go. And you look at kind of what this game means in terms of uh, the end jack hierarchy the standings right now with Salisbury defeating Montclair State they get to three and three two and one in the conference Salisbury that is Montclair State falling to three and three they're also two and one in the end jack now William Patterson two and three coming in but they are going to fall to or sinus on the road seemingly and they'll go to two and four TCNJ with the win gets to two and four as on third and nine Play goes right up the middle of the props again in there for the stop. Ortiz fired up once again. Saw Joe Rocabaldo get in there, number 34 as well on the stop for the props. They'll force another punt, but both these teams 1-0 in conference, Justin. If the props can find a way to win this game, they will get to 2-0, and only them, Montclair and Salisbury, will have two conference wins going into next week as the props get ready to host the Salisbury Seagulls here in Glassboro next Saturday. Yeah, this whole second half so far has just been three and out, three and out, three and out. And here on the punt, snap is low, and Gallagher just got in the way. Takes a bounce across the 50-yard line. Props are going to be set up with great field position here, but that's another thing you got to watch out for. The, those snaps, those long snaps on those punts have been pretty good today. That time, Gallagher nearly had some trouble with it. Yeah, it, it works out for the pros to get great field position. Just looks to be at the 48-yard line, and now just getting at 52 yards. You could get in the, if you get in the end zone here and you hit the point after touchdown, you're down by four when you were down by 18. You were down 21-3, and it's a, it's a big spot for this pros team. Again, not in the great weather. Bichua. On first down across the 50 to the 49. Profs starting this drive on their own 48. Three yard run. Second down. And I've been able to tell just how bad this weather has been here by uh, color of my shoes. Usually they're a nice kind of tan color and they have darted to a, a nice leather brown with all this rain coming down up here in the booth. Be second and seven with just over three minutes to play. Dividend to Bichua. Bichua cutting it back to the right side. And he'll be down at the 47. Two yard gain there, and it'll be third down and five for this Profs team. A big third down here as another captain is down and injured on the field. Uh, both sides will head to their respective sidelines. That's number 33, Carter Turner, Carson Turner, I'll say, who was down momentarily for Christopher Newport. He's back to his feet, jogging over to the sidelines, so a good side for him there. Profs huddle it up here in the entry timeout, 2.51 to play. Aaron Hook and Justin Locke with you all here on Rowan Athletics. Thank you all for sticking with us. Whether you're uh, just getting home from the game and tuning in or if you've been with us the whole way. Appreciate it a lot here on this rainy homecoming Saturday in Glassboro. Profs trying to fight back at this one, trailing 21 to 10. This is third down and five with Mayers dropping back. Pump fades, and then he's got the pressure coming right up the gut. Christopher Newport, a bit defensive play, will get their defense off the field. Jordan Coakley, the sophomore linebacker, sacking Mayers there. And Parigi is on to punt again. 
It's, I don't think we've seen a first down here in this second half. We've seen six drives, which is <laughs> unbelievable. Obviously, the rain being a big factor, but Parisi it's tough to watch. This is an end over end punt, and did the returner touch it? Yes, he did. Profs have it. The punt is muffed by the returner in Trey Hayes, and the Profs jump on it. What a turn of events, Justin. Profs thought their defense was coming back down onto the field, and Nate My uh, Mayers, who was dejected after not picking up that third down, he's right back out there with the offense. This is what the Profs needed. They have showed the defensive side has worked, but now you're even closer. This is the closest they've been, obviously, since they got that score with McCool before the first half ended, and now you just got again. If you get the edge of nice, if not, you get the field goal, you make it a one-score game either way. Prof starting on the captain's 31-yard line. Bichua out to the edge. Bichua with a stiff arm across the 30 and knocked out of bounds at the 29. Couple of yard gain for Bichua. And now flats fly after the play. Now some extra curriculars on the Rowan sideline. And you gotta hope for Rowan that no one standing on the sideline came onto the field to play or made any contact with a Christopher Newport, defender, because that'll be a bit penalty against the Profs. There were two flats that came out, and the referee is going to give us the call momentarily. It's a bit swayed in this game, either way, which way it goes, we'll see. And there it is. So someone on the sideline made contact with a Christopher Newport defender that was going after Petula. And the prosecutor did get knocked back 15 yards. A couple of these penalties, Justin, have really, really uh, set Rowan back on, on a couple of these drives, especially this one. You get the muff punt, you get set up at the 31, you actually worked inside of the 30, and now you're knocked back to the 45. Yeah, sometimes the mental part of the game is the, the crucial part where somebody on the sideline might have heard something that a Christopher Newport defender said and that probably just results in them pushing them, shoving here and there. And now, 15 yard penalty sets the cross back to the 45 yard line. Even worse, they lose it down. Second and 23 for Mayers. Mayers across the middle looking for Skabilia and was behind them. A complete third down. Minute 28 to go in the third. Be third down and forever here for the profs. Even worse with that penalty. I mean, at least if, even if you didn't hit the first down, you know, perhaps you get close to the 25, maybe the 26 to try a long field goal, Justin. But at this point, you need a first down for that to even be in the question. Their longest pass play was 20 yards earlier to Deglitz, so they need 23 here, so let's see what they can do. Four receiver set. And there's a flag on the play for a false start. I think the man in motion, Kevin Denton, might have jumped right before the snap. Profs had Tyshawn Bookman in the backfield that time. Here's the call. Oh, he said all the players were not set. <laughs> so I signaled out Kevin Denden. Wasn't his fault, it was everybody's fault. Everyone a little jittery before the snap there. Rowan's gonna be pushed back to the 50. I mean, they've given up 20 yards of, of penalties here on this drive alone. It's third and 28 for Nate Mayers. Just gets it out quickly here. Gordon with a catch at the 45. And he's wrapped up. Five yard pitch and catch. Newport player down and hurt on the near side. That's Yasir Jeter, number three, right back up there. We'll go grab his helmet and jog off. So Jeter looks to be all right. A five yard gain to the 45. Not close to the first down. Here is Parigi for another punt. This is going to be his seventh today. Peter Parigi has been busy. Gets a good snap here. 
And this is a kick that is going to sail into the end zone for a touchback. Not what you want there if you're the Rowan special teams unit. Minute and five to go in the third. And captains will get it at their own 20 yard line here to begin this drive. Here comes Matt Jurist. He sits of 10 through the air today for just 30 yards. There's only been 53 passing yards combined today, and you figured that with the hectic weather. That has slowed down actually a little bit in the last couple minutes. I probably just jits it though. Here's Jurist on the stream pass. Flips it out near side. Caught by Hayes. Hayes across the 25 to the 27. Seven yard completion there on first down. Clot stops with 57 seconds left in the third. You saw Hayes' first half was kind of the biggest piece of this offense here for Christopher Newport. Getting out that great kickoff to start off the game and they also had a good couple third down conversions. And right there gets a good play for a gain of five. And Christopher Newport looking also again. We haven't seen a lot of first down, if we have seen a first down here in this second half. 30 seconds. As Zierski taking his time, Gunner White is the tailback. And he'll get the carry here. White, keep pushing, trying to get to the 35. And then right at the end there, you saw number four, Hayes, get pushed down. And now we've got conversation going on. Christopher Newport, with all this extra stuff going on, they did pick up the first down. Got to the 35 yard line. And the third quarter clock will hit triple zeros here at Wagner Stadium. Same score as we had open up this second half, 21-10, profs trailing. And Justin, it has been a crazy third quarter. It was a crazy third quarter. Both teams offensively really struggling. And the profs who had multiple opportunities to get points and bring them within a store opening up this fourth quarter just could not do it. Now they've got a battle back. Down 11, 15 minutes left to play. Yeah, and the fumble on that part was, was really the, what the profs needed, and it turned from this league needing maybe 20 yards to get into a good field goal spot, turned back to 50 because of that, obviously, the penalty on the sideline, and then the initial bobble on the, on the next play. And then it turned into a forever, third and forever, as you call it out. And now the Profs have to, again, still score 12 points unanswered here. Gets Christopher Newport with 15 minutes to go as we will get underway here in this fourth quarter. Start of the fourth quarter. Teams will switch sides, first and 10 for Matt Jersey at his own 30 yard line. And the give goes to Gunner White, and White stood up. Perhaps staying a yard there with the forward progress, it'll be second down. Want a stat, Justin? One first down gained by either side in that third quarter. Here's Jazirsky out of the empty set. They've got a quarterback keeper here. And they do it again. He tries the right side, but he's bottled up. Rowan defensively have been in the right place at the right time. Really from the late second quarter on here is that time he was wrapped up by Vincent Gorillo, team's leading tackler, junior linebacker. No, a bit of confusion defensively here as Lodette set up third and nine. It would be a pivotal stop here for the profs. They've got a lot of it, as you said, only one first down. That was just before the end of the third quarter by White on that three-yard carry. And now third and nine, most likely a pass here from the Christopher Newport offense. Man in motion, right to left. 
Dzierski keeps it himself and will get about a yard to the 32 before he's wrapped up. Aaron Bryant gets in there for the props defensively. Here comes another punt for Baylor Gallagher. Talked about Parigi, who's punted it seven times today. For Gallagher, this will be his fifth punt. Captain's huddled up there for a moment. As Gallagher now drops back. Paul Ginty stands in front of the 35 yard line, back deep for the profs. For Gallagher, this is punt number five. We got whistles before the snap. False start will give Gallagher uh, a bit more room to get out of the way here. Gallagher, line drive, Dinty. We'll tell you he was gonna call for the fair catch. He might have uh, touched that ball, no he didn't. He'll let it roll though, and balls down at the 23 yard line for Nate Mayers and the Profs. That's will their start. I want to talk a little bit about the 1993 Rowan team, Rowan football team, made the NCAA Division III National Championship game. They lost 34 to 24 to Mountain Union, Justin, but what a season it was for them. 11 and 2 record, 5 and 0 in the conference. And when you look at the schedule, you see a lot of schools that have changed names since they, uh, in their opening game, defeated Newport News. That's where Christopher Newport hails from. Batua wrapped up on first down, losing a couple of yards there. Batua going backwards that time. To second down and 17, a seven yard loss for Pachula. All the way back to the 16 yard line. That's his first negative rush of the day. Twenty eight carries, 121 yards for Pachula. 1130. Left to go. Mayers on second down, play action, drops back, pressure in his face, lets it go, and it's high intended for Denton. It covers that time Noah Morton, the freshman safety, getting up, nearly got a hand on it. Third down at 16. Would have been a big completion there to Denton, but just out of the reach. And Again, it's, it's been hard to pinpoint passes here in, in this rain and again, for us, we just need to somehow, some play, some way, uh, get a, down the field as much as they could do and get on the board here to try to chip with the lead. Profs have thrown it short of the sticks on third and long multiple times. They do it again here. Spinello on the stream pass in and out of his hands. Throws a little low from Mayers and the Profs. Another three and out with 11.23 left to play, and the clock is obviously not their friend, Justin, as Christopher Newport is probably going to look to just chew clock on this next drive, try, try and cut three, four minutes off the clock for the profs. As Peter Parigi will punt it for the eighth time today. Gets it away. It's going to head over towards the near sideline. A sideways wobbler that will roll out of bounds before the 45 yard line. So Christopher Newport gonna start on Rowan's side of the 50. The 21 10 lead and 11 15 left to go in the ball game. The stands here in Wacker Stadium uh, got many, many little rivers throughout the, uh, the stands. Got puddles galore. Track is soaked, a lot of wind today as well. 
these are what uh, this is what guys our dad's age would probably tell us is uh, you know ideal football weather. This is how football is meant to be played in, in bad weather, I suppose. Dzirsky. Here comes the man in motion in Hayes as they give it to Gunner White and White. Breaking that first tackle, still on his feet to the 35. White is still going with a push from his line to the 34 and a seven yard run for Gunner White there. Impressive as he kept the legs churning. Second and three. You know, White kind of doing what Bakula did on the opposite side of the cross today. He's kind of breaking through that first tackle and keep chugging along. And let's, can we only see one first down here in the second half. Was by White. And he's looking to do, stay here on this second down, most likely a run here for Christopher Newport. Across the 20, close to the 15-yard line. With the run there, it's the freshman. First carry of the day for Laquan Washington Pierce. 5'9", 235 pounds. Built like a fullback, but showed off the speed as he hit the second level that time. Gets to the 24-yard line. 19-yard line. Sorry. 19-yard line. 15-yard run for Washington Pierce. And he's in the backfield of Dell. Set back behind Dzirsky on first and 10. I like that man in motion across the line. And now the ball is out. Who has it? Looks like Christopher Newport recovers. Washington Pierce coughed it up. Profs nearly had an opportunity for another turnover, and the man who recovered for Christopher Newport is down in pain right now. So a lot to go over there, Justin, but the Profs with nearly a game change in turnover again. Would have been their third of the day. Yeah, we see, again, a lot of fumbles really off this weather. And, and that is, by the way, sorry, Justin, Tzirsky is the one down right now for Christopher Newport. He was the one who was able to dive on that ball and recover it. And you gotta be concerned for Dzirsky if you're Christopher Newport, as they've got backup freshman Connor Barry, who's played in five games this year, warming up on the sideline just in case. Dzirsky's still down, now helped up to his feet by the trainers. He'll walk off to the sideline, let's be all right for now, but we'll see what that means for, for the profs, if they can take advantage Got to keep the captains out of the end zone for sure here. 21 to 10 game, 9.26 left to play. And this is going to be the freshman, Connor Barry, out here to lead this offense. Freshman quarterback, 6'1", 205 pounds. So Barry, number 10, you see him there, ready to take his first snap. Handoff is to White, and White is again bottled up and driven all the way back to the 25. Cody Young, along with Donnie Clifford in there for the stop defensively for the Profs, a big loss. Ball somehow remains at the 19, it looks. It looks like White lost like four or five yards there. I guess they'll give him the forward progress. Got back to the line of scrimmage. Profs nonetheless forcing Barry here into a third and long. And actually, check that. Barry out of the game after just one play. Matt Dzirsky back in for the captains on third and 10. Uh, the whistle and a timeout by Christopher Newport. First of the half for them. Clock stops with 8.04 left. And 
Paul Crowley is the head coach of the Christopher Newport captains. Just his second season as head coach. Captain seven and three last year, five and one in the end jack. Finished second in the end jack last year behind Salisbury. Crowley, only the third head coach in CNU football history. Back on December 8th of 2021, he was the interim head coach for about a month in the 2020 season. And his squad will come out here for a third and 10 on the Profs 19 yard line. Will be a huge stop for the pros. They get it here as they've been good at getting stops here against the the captain so far in the second half. 8.04 to play. Here comes Hayes in motion. Hand off to White. White bounces it to the outside, cuts it back to the 10, and White is inside the 10 yard line. A first down run. It'll be first and goal for the captains. And with under eight minutes to play, Justin, a huge first down pickup there. Profs letting up a back breaking run, and now first and goal. The Captains, if they score here, they could put this game out of reach. Yeah, see the process of how the lead at 21 10 for a while, and White's one of his best runs of the game sets up a first to goal at the eight for the captains of Chris Newport. Dzerski with White behind them on first and goal. Gives it to him, White, the stiff arm, able to break it to the outside. And there he's dragged down at about the 10. He'll lose a couple of yards. That was first and goal from the eight. It'll be second and goal now from the 10. And in this game, 191 yards between the two sides on the ground. Check that, 214 yards, 124 for Christopher Newport. Here's White on another div to the outside. Keeps the lead churning to about the six, where he's wrapped up, four yard rush. Be third and goal. Ross have done it. Pretty good job outside of that one drive where it was the four straight uh, Matt Dzerski keepers, Justin. They went up a touchdown on a kind of questionable call right at the goal line. They said Dzerski broke the play, but outside of that, the Profs have done a good job bending, not breaking. Yeah, they they only had the two big plays besides that Dzerski touchdown. It was, again, a kickoff touchdown to start the game right. and then a run by White. So it's two unfortunate plays. You take those back. Uh, you're up in this game. Jazirski, another keeper for him. Behind his line, he's gonna go down at the five. Five and a half left to play, and we'll see what the captains wanna do here on fourth and goal. And goal. Fourth and goal. Five Christopher Newport, it looks like they're going to most likely take a timeout here. Dzerski's just walking off the field. He's got, he's got 25 seconds to get back in there. And yeah, they are going to run a play on fourth and goal. Okay, five yards to gain here for Christopher Newport. Most likely going to be a run. We haven't seen too many pass plays here. Dzerski probably going to take it himself here, Justin. Hayes comes in motion. They fake the dip to him. It is Dzerski up the middle, and he is not going to get there. Maybe a yard on the keeper, and I think Christopher Newport there just wanted to kill a few more seconds. Still leading 21 to 10. This Roman defense has been absolutely stellar in this second half. Profs needing a score here, though, and quickly if they want a chance in this ball game. 4.51 left. 
Yeah, we see Christopher Newport has got those two long plays for scores, but the Pros need one here. They, if they get a touchdown here, it would be pivotal as you could cut it to obviously a four or a three point game if you go for two and you convert. But without that, it's pretty much almost impossible as you have just, again, again under five minutes, 4.51 to go here on this one. Here's the div. It is Butmill with the Terry. Prof starting this drive on their own four. Butmill to about the seven for three yards, second down and seven. Now Butman splits out wide, screen pass goes to him, he bobbles it. Ball is loose, and that's a dead ball according to the referees. Incomplete pass. They were looking for him on that little swing out pass. And again, the ball has been slippery today. It's been tough to hold on to. You've got just 11 completions between the two teams. And only 62 yards have come through the air. Christopher Newport has ran it 35 times for 139 yards. Profs, 39 rushes for 93 yards. Third and seven here for them. At their own seven yard line, Mayers rolls out, throws across his body and out of bounds. Intended target was uh, bid number 16 there, Jake Chiquet. And here comes Peter Parigi once again to part of the white. Ninth punt today for Parigi and this profs unit. The 424 to go. They may not get the ball back here, Justin. Yeah, Christopher Newport most likely gonna just chew the clock the rest of the way. As this part by Parigi most likely could get to the near midfield. Trey Hayes back deep to return. He had the opening kickoff touchdown, 94 yards. He stands at the Prof 40 yard line. Parigi with his heels just about five feet away or so from the back of that end zone. It's a high punt and a really good one. This one will roll and be down by the Profs at the Christopher Newport 39. So you figure in your nine yard end zone. It's probably about seven yards deep there. And, I mean, you could probably call that about a 65 yard punt right there by Parigi. Parigi does a good job comes there. In fourth in net average in the conference. Uh, probably his best of the day right there. Yeah, I mean, I, I said midfield, he got it past that to 39. So uh, it gets tough, especially when you're in your own end zone trying to, again, avoid stepping out of the end zone on that initial punt. But again, Chris for Newport, just one, one or two first downs will close the door here against the Frost. 418 left to play. Gunner White, the tailback. He's been busy today. They give it to him again. White up the left side, dragging a defender. Oh, and going down across the 45. Ball was loose it looks like but white seemingly recovering that fumble got to about the 46 now rowan will call a timeout it's a seven yard rush and it'll be second and three with 403 left so rowan next week justin they'll have salisbury coming in here to glassboro and salisbury and christopher newport have been at the top of the end jack for the last couple of years. Prof 7-3 last year, finished third behind those two teams. And after a big test today in really just unfavorable conditions, a lot of stuff not going their way, a lot of stuff out of their control. You figure next week, it, it, it's, it's gonna be sort of a, you know, we're gonna come and get you type of game. As Salisbury has dominated them the last couple of years, but I think Rowan, this is a team that today is gonna be frustrated and that's when they're going to look to take out some of that frustration against the Seagulls. Yeah, I mean, you do have a plus uh, today's game. Defensively, you, you held your own again. Obviously, you don't want to give up 21 points, and the game's not over, obviously. But uh, offensively, it's hard to get into a rhythm. Obviously, Mayer's new quarterback getting implemented in. Obviously, did it in the big portion against TC and J. But Salisbury, who's had good, uh, high-scoring wins, just can't do anything about uh, what they could do here in the rain and the wind and all that uh, here in Richard Wacker Stadium. 
Handoff is to White. White bounces it out to the left. He is at the 50, across the 50. And he'll have a first down. Yeah, and a man momentarily down for the captain's fifth year senior, Connor Curley, the right tackle, is uh, back up to his feet. And uh, he'll actually come out of the game here for this let's play. 3.35 to go. The ball on the prop 49. First and 10. Gunner White today, 22 carries, over 100 yards. He loses the ball there. Prof's trying to dive on it. And it looks like again, Christopher Newport by the stint of their teeth recovery that time. Now some shoving after the play. So White falling on his own fumble again. Profs call timeout, 2.53 left. Two teams in this game, Justin, seven for 27 on third down. It's, it's been a, you know, defensive type of game, obviously, with this weather. And now twice on this drive, Christopher Newport nearly turning it over a dead via the fumble. Props having a couple chances to get themselves back in the game, get themselves one more shot offensively down by 11, but haven't been able to get those breaks. And now one more first down should just about do it as the props are down to just one timeout left. Yeah, you said running through the timeouts, kind of just trying to get just another stop. Again, it would have been fortunate if they would have got one of those uh, two drops, the fumbles, but again, they still would have had to go the length of the, of the field and score and, and then still score again. That's the, if they're only down seven, it's a different situation, but they're down by 11. And you have held Christopher Newport 221 since that initial uh, touchdown by Drewski at the end of the first, but it's been all defense here for both sides in the second half. Out of this timeout, it'll be second down and 13. They're going to add uh, 10 seconds to the game clock. They'll go from 2.53 to 3.03. As uh, we wait for that. There you go. So here is Jazerski, second and 13. Yeah, when he's been uh, out of the empty here, it's normally been a QB keeper. He's ran it 13 times today. He'll do it again here. Cuts it out left side, there's a flag. And that'll be a hold on the captains. On the holding call, it'll knock him back 10 yards. They'll go from the 48 to the 38. Uh, okay, maybe not. Oh yeah, there you go. Penalty is declined by the profs, so that's why they didn't move it back. Jay, of course, he didn't trust his defense on third and 12. I mean, he's got good reason to. They've been stellar. Cedric Dawkins' group has really been great at uh, just 
just finding the ball and, and they've knocked it free a few times, just haven't gotten the chance to recover in this second half. And also, if you would have accepted it, it would have set up two more possible plays, Chris Report, but again, they've used most of the timeouts uh, for the profs, so they're just trying to get this one stop. Hopefully here on third down at 12. 2.57 left, third and 12. against the profs false start I didn't know you could I didn't know there was a false start on, <laughs> on a defensive player I didn't know that was a thing unless it said offside I need to get my hearing checked but you heard false start right Justin yeah, I did hear false start do we do rules against the, rule the profs either way it'll be just a five yard penalty third and seven Gunner White is the tailback. He's ran it a lot here today, and he'll be dropped here. Cross again in the backfield before White can even think about which way he wants to go. Be fourth and 11. Jay Corson will burn his final time out here with 2.52 to go. And, uh, Christopher Newport will punt it with the ball sitting at midfield. Big stop by the profs there. They get into the backfield early, and now after a couple penalties called back-to-back, fourth and 11, now you don't have any timeouts, obviously, for the profs, but you do get the ball back, and last week they did score their last uh, touchdown on a, uh, a minute 37 drive with no, t with no timeouts, so... Obviously, you're now down uh, 11 instead of being down six, but it's a still a chance here if you get the ball and sometime inside the red zone, you can give them the end up somehow and cut the lead down as much as you can before uh, this game comes to a close. Gallagher will put it. <laughs> Prof sending the house. Ball will go over Jinty's head. This will stay out of the end zone. Oh, what a bounce for the captains. It's down at about the four yard line. <laughs> Baylor Gallagher. Uh, some help from Mother Nature there with a great punt. And the profs pinned inside their own five are going to have to drive the length of the field to make this a one-store game. Only 2.41 left. No timeouts. It'll be the biggest test today so far for Nate Mayers in this offense. Yeah, Nate Mayers is going to need to kind of pull out some tricks here. He's getting the longest play and score for the profs this year. It's 97 yards. The Degley allows against McDaniel, but you're going to need... Uh, Again, they're at the three, so it could be a 97 yard crazy play again. Hand off Butman to about the five, not much. Maybe a yard or two there, as you said, Justin Prof starting at their own three yard line. They'll go hurry up here without a timeout. Want to conserve clock as best they can. So a two yard run to the five. Mayers now from the back of his end, they'll throw it, and he's got Denden. Denden up the sideline, and there he goes. 40, 35, 30, 20, 10, touchdown, Profs! Can you believe it? Rowan has life. 95 yards, Mayers to Denton, and it's 21 16. Degas got two touchdowns this year a 97 yarder and a 95 yarder. We show it there. Degden near side makes the play, and Bears, what a throw. All the money there. It's hard to pinpoint pass in the rain, but Bears steps up, and that's a big spot. I mean, again, now 
a crucial timeouts called there for the Pros. And again, Nairs has showed without timeouts, he can still get in the end zone here for the Pros. And you gotta wonder, will the Pros go for two? It looks like they will. Five-point game made sense. They want to get it to a field goal game, and they'll try the onside kick if they get this year. Well, they'll try it either way, but want to make it a three-point game just in case they do recover it. Trip set to the left for Nate Mayers. This is fifth completion just a moment ago to Denton. They go screen here. Shane Morin reaches for the end zone, and he breaks the play, and he's in. Profs convert the two points, and it is a three-point game, Justin. I don't believe what I'm saying right now. 2.07 to go. Now, Profs don't have a timeout, so the day will hinge on this upcoming onside kick. We saw a crazy sequence last year in Glassboro. Props had TCNJ here. They recovered an onside kick late. And they won in walk-off fashion with a 38-yard field goal. Rowan will need to recover here. Otherwise, Christopher Newport can take a few knees and end the game. Yeah, it's going to be a tough spot. Obviously, last year against TCAJ, October 7th, where it's crazy. Back-to-back -back years, October 7th, they beat TCAJ on a walk-off. But obviously now, October 14th, a big day here. Big outside kick, looking to recover. And they got to pull out the tricks here because obviously the field goal will tie it, go to overtime. But we just saw a walk pass there from Ayers. It could be a big spot and possibly the game later touchdown again back to back weeks would be hit big for him. Captains have their hands team out there. Peter Parigi gets it away on the ground, takes a bounce, and it is just slapped out of bounds by Newport. Ball didn't reach 10 yards, and so they'll just put it out of bounds. Now with 207 left to go. Figure with the play clock starting at about 35. Props will have a chance. And then they're going to try and jar the ball loose. Christopher Newport does need to pick up one additional first down before this one is officially wrapped up. The props we've seen have jarred it loose a couple times. They're going to look to do that again. Kevin Denden with that catch. Three receptions on the day, 120 yards. 95-yard touchdown strike. Mayers to Denden. Out of the victory formation. Jazerski dropping back, and what a play there. He just, he just stuttered backwards, Justin, to kill more clock. We said captains can't really take four knees here and turn it over. Can't even really take three. Clock wouldn't wind down all the way, so Jazerski killing an extra five, ten seconds there by just walking backward. It's a smart play there. And again, they're just trying to walk away with a victory to pull up another Ed Jack win because, again, if one little thing goes wrong, the Pros pick up this ball somehow, it will set them up in a big spot. Play clock wasn't running. Now it is. Now to a minute 25, and there's now the play clock's been reset. I don't, I don't understand what's going on here. Referees have got to uh, talk this one over. They're going to reset the clock, surely. There's a minute 23 up there now. And up, they'll just fix the uh, play clock. They'll go down to 25 seconds on second down. Now the clock's moving got about a second difference between when the game clock will hit a minute and the play clock will hit zero. Christopher Newport really doesn't even need to snap the ball here. It would be in their best interest to not snap it, just take the delay of game penalty, and that's what they'll do. Moving back five yards. Oh, no, they'll actually call a timeout just before the uh, delay of game. So a good move there, 58 seconds. On second down, you take the knee, take the knee on third, and, and that will be the ball game. Even if you have to snap it to the punter, and you can just run around and kick it out of bounds to waste three, four seconds. 
Rowan, just not much they to do defensively. I mean, you did that huge 95-yard touchdown, but perhaps just a little bit too late, just. Yeah, I mean, there were a couple of drives where, again, they had the the fumble on the one play, didn't work out for them, and then it turned into a three and out. If, if you score there or if that, that initial field goal earlier would have been a touchdown, it would have been obviously the lead for the Frost, and it would it would actually be a drive going for the other side, which would Chris for Newport for the win. So second and 15. With 58 seconds to go. A lot of confusion down there. <laughs> There's the whistle, and now the clock, play clock that is, will roll. Dzerski, he's gonna have the house coming after him. Props gonna line up all 11 guys on the ball. Now they'll drop one back, that's Jason Blanks, number four, just in case. We'll try and leap over the line there, and uh, he gets denied on, on that try. And we got pushing and shoving. Just not necessary here at the end of the game. Clots to roll down to about 15 seconds. Newport to take one final knee and end the game. Yeah, that last show, the refs just kind of tell the players to get apart. As you bet, the rest don't want to stay on the rail any more longer than they have to as well. Rowan obviously frustrated. I mean, you have that late score just kind of out of nowhere on, on such a bad spot to be. They are going to end up coming up short. Timeout with 13 seconds left on third and 18, so they just want to talk it over. They'll come out of the huddle. Take the lead. If the profs can't get a hand on the ball, the day will be over. And Rowan will drop to two and four with the loss. This will be their first conference loss of the year after they beat TCNJ last week. Christopher Newport with the win, Justin. They're going to be the only undefeated team in conference play in terms of end jazz squads. They'll be two and zero oh through their first two conference battles. They'll get to four and two on the year, and they'll take sole possession of first place in the New Jersey Athletic Conference. Five and one them. last year. Yeah, pivotal game for them, and again, they just they held the cross for a while to that ten point, uh, ten point score for them, and the same with the cross. I mean, think about it. Christopher Newport, they can walk out of uh, Glassboro with the win, but obviously, the second half, your offense didn't do much like anything. I mean, you had a couple first downs from White on the runs, but you didn't score, but you did allow a ninety-five yard touchdown. Obviously, in the closing minutes of this game, and just going to leave it obviously to close the door here. So here we go, Profs, their only chance is to try and jar it loose. Zeusti takes a knee and is hit almost immediately. You knew there would be some, some words and stains after, but the final five seconds will tick off the clock here. And the Profs will lose a frustrating one on homecoming Saturday. 21 to 18, the Christopher Newport captains come in to Glassboro and win it. A three-point game in the end. Props were trailing by a couple of scores most of the game. They have the only points of the second half, Justin, that 95-yard touchdown. Kevin Denton on the receiving end of it from Nate Mayers. And <laughs> it's, it's a loss for Rowan that you can learn a lot of things from, but also just, just a lot of things out of their control in this one. That next week they'll hopefully have better conditions to play under. and Maybe they'll get their starting quarterback back as well, although you have the Kind of be admirable of, of the job that Nate Mayers did today. I should say his performance today was admirable, especially down the stretch, that big touchdown strike. <coughs> he, he's a freshman playing in these type of conditions. Not every day you see a kid go out there and persevere like that. Yeah, I mean, again, you, you talk about the score. And it's 21-18, it's a close one, but 21-3 was the, the score prior to that. And then, obviously, they got the cooler touchdown before the end of the half, and it was 21-10. If they would have scored... It's say in the third quarter on that 95 yard touchdown, it would have been a big spot. That had only been, you need to get back to the red zone one time, you tie it up, or you go for the win in the end zone. But it's 15 unanswered points. Chris for Newport, it might be 2 0 in conference play, but they definitely have some flaws there on that defensive side of the ball. Obviously, the, the weather permitting, it's, it's, it's very tough to play in, but it's you got to play with the conditions that are on the field. And it's, it's going to be, the weather's not going to be sunshine and rainbows every day. It's going to be different. And obviously today, some of the worst conditions, obviously, you can play it, but besides snow, but it's, 
it, nothing you can do with Christopher Newport. They, they walk away with a win. And now the Pros are set on Salisbury next week here at home. Pros will have the Seagulls in Glassboro next week. For Aaron Hook and Justin Lott, thank you all for tuning in. Our great crew uh, doing a good job with this crazy weather holding it down. So we will see you all next week.